Okay. Uh, let's go to um, start at the top. That'll be uh, Director Allen. Well, thank you, Director McPartland. Um, you know, um, I guess I guess I'm going to start just on a, on a high level. Um, very disappointed in the comments that we heard in the, in the public. Um, hearing on this item of the budget. Um, and, and, and I want to take a moment to respond to some of the incredibly outrageous and false statements that were made here about defunding police uh, that we heard during, during that public hearing. Um, we heard BART PD murders people. And that's not true. The definition of murder is the unlawful premeditated killing of one human being by another. It's just simply a false statement. Um, you know, statements made like this right now at a time of, of such turmoil and unrest uh, really, I, I can only guess, are just politically motivated. Uh, so, you know, I, I would hope that maybe we could start to eliminate some of these things in the future. I, I get I get that we can't silence the public, but I, I think it is important that we address some of these these statements that are made that are not true. Um, you know, an overwhelmingly uh, majority of paying BART paying BART writers want a safe system and believe overwhelmingly believe that police presence will improve their safety and overwhelmingly believe that if you reduce police or eliminate them even worse, uh, we'll create a system that really even fewer than we have now people will want to ride. Um, you, would, you, you heard from one person in public comment that admitted they never pay. Their real agenda is free transit. Their real agenda is not uh, police, but they're using police to get to free transit. Uh, this is just another way to disrupt the system to accomplish that. And we all know that free transit is not sustainable. We heard someone say police don't keep people safe. That's not true. Um, if, if any of those people took the time and, and even some board members took the time to really investigate what our, our men and women in our police department do, they would know that, that, that the stats are there, that our police department keeps criminals, violent criminals, out of our system. We heard BART PD criminalizes people for eating a sandwich. It's it's not true. BART police enforces our writer code of conduct in our system. Most, if not all, are part of our state law. They're asked to do that. It's their job. It's what they sign up for. It's in their job description. It is the writers that criminalize themselves by breaking those laws and then sometimes further criminalize themselves if they refuse to comply with officers' requests change the laws if you don't like them. And this board can do that. Um, but don't blame officers for doing their job that they swore to do, that they go to work every day and they do their job to uphold the laws in this state. Um, you know, if five members of this board don't want that enforced, um, then eliminate the code of conduct. Let the system become a continuous place of mayhem. That would send our officers out to do other things. Um, but you know, I can guarantee you ambassadors, fair inspectors, and other non-sworn positions, uh, whatever we can come up with or invent, they have no enforcement authority. So uh, essentially, people will do as they please on a BART train or in our, in our properties. Um, so for those of you who don't think BART PD does enough for public safety, wait till you see the result if they are gone or substantially diminished. Um, eliminate or reduce the effectiveness of our police and people will not come back to BART when we restore our service post COVID uh, and hundreds of millions of dollars being spent to rebuild this system will all be wasted. So let's go to slide four. I do have a couple of questions on the presentation to the public. Um, while you're bringing that up, I just wanna make a general statement that once again, I, I believe that this presentation to the public has been disingenuous because we have not shown the public the difference between our fiscal year 20 budget and our fiscal year 21 budget. We are only showing them what we started out of the gate with on a fiscal year 21 budget, which was a, something like a 7% increase in fiscal year 20. 
and we have shown them how much we've reduced that budget um, since then. So on slide four, um, I kind of have a question here because this picture really doesn't have any numeric, um, there's, there's no numbers as to what level. There's just a line that says pre-COVID-19 ridership baseline. And if you look at this graphic, it kind of would lead a person to believe that we're getting somewhere close to 85 or 90 percent of our pre-COVID ridership by the end of fiscal year 21. So I'm wondering if staff could answer two questions for me. Um, I know that our budget targets a 30% ridership average over the whole year. So I would like to know what's the targeted ridership level on July 1st of that fis of fiscal year 21? And what is our expected, you know, I know these are targets, but what did we use as our expected ridership ship level at June 30th of fiscal year 21? I wanna know the bookends. So Director Allen, this is Pamela Hasselhold. Um, I, you know, this graph on slide four is there for illustrative purposes. Uh, right now, our ridership is doing exactly what we thought it would do when we made some initial projections on the FY20 uh, year-end outlook um, in late March. And that is that we're about, uh, we're running about 9% of our ridership right now. It's up a little bit from that low of 6 to 7% that we hit a, a month or two ago. Um, I expect that any day now we'll top 40,000 and we'll be back ending the month at around 10%. That's exactly what we expected. So if I had to put out a number for July 1, assuming it's a weekday, I'd say about 10% of our prior levels. Uh, we are in the process of cal what we call calendarizing our ridership and fair revenue for fiscal year 21. And I expect that we would get to somewhere Somewhere around the 35% or so by the end of the fiscal year, that was the midpoint of the two scenarios that we showed the board um, in, in uh, at, at several of our past presentations. And um, we, uh, we, you know, we will we will continue to reevaluate the ridership each quarter and each month as we go through the fiscal year. Okay, but you, you haven't answered the question. I, I get that it's a 35% average over the year, but where do we expect to be on June 30th of 2021? Or, or should I just do that math of 10, you know, starting at 10, an average of 35 and, and say that? No, no, the, I, I, I'm, the $150 million fair revenue budget that we showed in this presentation is 30% of the prior level that we would have expected pre-pandemic. So on average, we're gonna start at around 10%, uh, you know, by the time we end the fiscal year, and obviously even, even in non-pandemic times, our ridership goes up and down throughout the year, we call that seasonality. Uh, we would probably end at around 35% of the prior levels, maybe, maybe um, a little bit higher than that, maybe closer to 50% by the end of the year. I, I, we are still working through the numbers and making our best estimates, including a calendarization of a dip this coming fall when we expect a second resurgence of the COVID virus. Okay, so so if I'm hearing you correctly, I think you said that we would expect to be somewhere around. I mean, we have to pick targets. Look, and 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 nobody can hold you to these targets. There are so many unknowns. I'm trying to understand what our targets are. I think what I heard is that you would expect we're at 50% by the end of the fiscal year. On June 30th, we're carrying 50% of uh, what our uh, our expected ridership was before COVID. Is that right? So so around 50% is, is likely reasonable. That's in line with the midpoint of the two scenarios that we showed the board on a graph um, to uh, one of our slides a couple of weeks, ago. May 14th. Okay, so, so my only point here is you're showing a picture that really shows far greater than 50% at the end of FY21 that shows in the gray box at the end of the year. So I think this is a misleading slide with respect to what we really are, are saying we expect. So I'm gonna move on from that. Um, but uh, so on slide eight, you know, again, we're not showing year over year, we're showing fiscal year 21 version one budget versus fiscal year 21 final budget. Um, 
you're showing a 10% cut in your budget. And I, I watched, uh, after our last meeting, I watched media outlets repeat this over and over. And this is misleading. We are misleading the public. And this was supposed to be a public hearing. Um, we're not cutting spending operations 10% over our prior year. But in our prior year, we were carrying about 400, 405,000 riders per weekday. And now we are carrying somewhere around 30%, uh, I'm sorry, 30,000 per weekday. So the reality is that your fiscal year 21 preliminary budget of a million and, and six, I'm sorry, 1 billion and 16 million, that reflected a 6% increase over our fiscal year 20 budget um, of of 51, that reflects uh, a 6% increase of, or $51 million increase in operation spending over our, our fiscal year 20 budget. Um, we increased the fiscal year 20 budget by 7.5% to get to version one. Then we show a 6% cut for our final fiscal year uh, 21 budget. I, I, that's just, uh, it's creative media spin in my opinion. And, um, you know, at best, you get the BART headlines saying that we did something to cut our budget uh, by 10%, but that's just not the reality. Um, so uh, no one- Just to re remind us all, as, as you and I have discussed, um, we did add the SPBX two station, yes. 10 mile extension between our FY20 budget yes. and our FY21 preliminary budget, the, the February budget. Right. Um, and so what we've been able to, you know, that's a, that's a, somewhere close to like $45 million of increased expense. Million. Yeah, $45 million in expense. You're going to recover uh, some of that of 20-something uh, million from VTA. Right. But just to, just to you know, it, it put some real transparency here on, on the FY21 budget, that $1 billion and $16 figure, $1.016 billion, billion FY21 budget does include the addition of the headcount and the power and the non-labor to support that 10-mile two-station extension. And that estimate is around $45 million. Right. So, and um, we're increasing the operating budget by 51. So, um, you know, I mean, yeah, there's a little bit, you know, there's, there's a little bit extra there. But I think, you know, the magnitude of this is that I would have expected in only expecting to carry 35 percent of our ridership over the next fiscal year that we would have cut operation spending by far more than this. Not not down to 35 percent, but by far more than nothing um, or by far more than a six percent increase. Um, no one's going to ask from the public or the media, you cut from what to what. And this is why I'm pointing this out. We see in this budget a 2% increase in labor from fiscal year 20 to fiscal year um, uh, 21. Uh, in, in, um, in, in spite of, we know that there is $35 million in our, in our fiscal year 20 budget that was for labor positions that were never even filled. And we're calling that a cut as well. Excuse um, me, Director Allen. I'm going to have to butt in here for a little bit. We're we're working on 13 minutes, and we're we're drilling okay. into this. Um, and at at the policy level, with the agenda that we've got, uh, what I'd suggest in order to be able to get into this in detail, uh, if you would uh, please put in an RCI, I would be delighted to second it for you. Uh, but we we kind of got to get going. Okay, I, I'm almost finished here. Um, you know, the, the, in addition to this, we're increasing our capital budget by 6%. We really haven't seen the, the detail I've asked for on that. Uh, we got a little bit of it last night after five o'clock. Um, so the only parts of this budget that are really being cut over fiscal year 20 are our allocations of operating revenue to the capital budget, to the rail car payments, and the pension stabilization fund. That's just kicking the can and that's a can that's going to explode. So, um, you know, you know, in the last meeting staff said we only have a limited amount of control over our, that's really the problem here. It's a systemic problem. It's, it's not the fault of any staff person sitting here listening today, but it is a, a problem, a big problem that BART will need to address going forward. Um, it's just common sense. 
you know, ridership's down 90, over 90%, and we're increasing our budget by six. Um, this, this is a budget plan that just doesn't make any sense. And I can go on, uh, you know, I, my, my mic got cut <laughs> at the last meeting down to basically an, an inaudible level. Uh, and I can go on and, and go through all of those things again. But I just, I cannot be a supporter of this budget. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Allen. Next, we'll have uh, Director Ames. 